Welcome back to Phoenix Point. I'm Hoos Foos McCabe, and you are my co-pilot as we push back the Pandora virus. Let's start the way we always start, by reviewing the changes we've made to all of our squad. So with the gift squad, we've done nothing. They didn't participate in last episode or the mission from last episode, and we didn't have any equipment that we wanted to change for them. For the burden squad, we start with Chigger. Chigger the love monkey. He had 31 points of his own, and we spent all of them for two points of speed so that he could start moving around a little bit better. We also, as you can see in his, in his hands, we gave him this Goliath GL2 grenade launcher because that way he could spread the love around. For Elsa, she didn't level up the way Chigger did. She's close. Uh, so we used her 10 points to give her plus one strength because clearly she's going to need it at some point. Raphael leveled up, so he had a bunch of points to spend. So we took Extreme Focus for 10, reducing his Overwatch cost by one action point, which is great. We know that. We've seen that. And then we also gave him uh, one willpower and one speed each with his remaining points. And so that leaves him six. With Nina, our assault, we spent all of her points and four more Phoenix Pool points, giving her plus one speed. We just need to get these guys moving more. For Kirill, we are sitting on his 10 points. We want him to level, and then we can start doing some more fun stuff with him. We also used some Phoenix Pool points last time around to give him, I think it was speed. For Kjotlek, he did level. And in fact, he almost made it to another level. We spent 10 points on his first ability, Armor Break, so he can spend three will points to deal 30 shred damage. And I've been informed that it, even though it says additional shred damage, it overrides whatever shred damage the existing weapon does. And if you were to do it with something that has multiple rounds, that's, that shred damage would be spread across each of the rounds. It wouldn't be 30 on each of the rounds, which is unfortunate, but also not absolutely crazy. And then we put one point each into strength and speed because I want him to be able to get up close and then take a beating if he needs to. The next thing I think we're going to do for him, well, and we'll see, but I think the next thing we're going to do for him is this farsighted because this will give him two willpower at the same cost of two willpower points. And it then comes with a bonus 10 to perception range. We just have to make sure we have the points when he levels up. And of course we have to decide whether to spend the points on close quarters of eight. And that's it for our personnel. So let's check out our bases. There's nothing exciting happening anywhere, but at Phoenix University, we've got just minutes left on this new training facility, and then containment still has three days left. The other thing that I'm considering doing is this base, if we take a look, here it is. If we take a look, it is in the mist. So I think that means we can be attacked. So I am considering building a vehicle and stationing it there since we only have a couple of, of squad members there. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether that makes sense. I know Daddy Khan has suggested that I have a vehicle anyway, but sort of stationing it there in reserve is probably not exactly what he intended. So please let me know what you think. I adjusted our research queue a fair bit. I made our top priority the improved med kit. As you can see, it gives 50% more hit points and removes 50% of paralysis. I don't know how much paralysis matters for us, but certainly the 50% more hit points going from, I think it would be 80 to 120 is, is obviously a huge uh, bonus for us. And then we are still reverse engineering this Iconoclast shotgun. And I pushed basic bionic technology research down because I'm sure it's going to be expensive for us to do and we're still building these guys up anyway. And then what I did was I removed the infiltrator. It is over here somewhere. We've got so much stuff now. Yeah, I removed the infiltrator because I'm not even sure we're going to be able to take advantage of it right away. And so I'd rather do some things that we know we can get benefits from. So I basically threw in every single possible autopsy including even this uh, Acheron Autopsy, which gives us 250 of these of these bonus points, which we can't even use until we do the research into mutations. But I'm sure we'll adjust the heck out of this thing along the way, so I'm not, I'm not too worried. In manufacturing, we didn't make any changes. We're just chugging along. Here you can see the status with each of the factions. We don't care about bumping Synedrian until we finish their Diplo mission. And given the choice, because Sophia hates Tobias West, we're going to try to raise our reputation with Anu, if we do get into positive territory with New Jericho, though, we'll put some serious effort into recruitment and trading with them. And I think that's actually very likely. If we go look at Overrun, this is a New Jericho mission. So we could actually bump our reputation with them to the point where we could do some recruiting if that's what we chose to do, or maybe some trading. I don't think we're going to get tech out of them because we'd have to bump it really high. So that's where we are right now. Let's take a look at our 
the location of our ships. So the gift is headed up. I have them headed up to the Chaos Market mission, but I wonder if we should maybe stop somewhere else along the way. Like maybe we can inspect this, maybe we should take over this Phoenix Foxtrot. But maybe we'll leave them on that because it doesn't really matter that much because today we're going to take the burden to this Pandoran nest that we discovered last episode. So we're going to send them to there. And uh, just as a quick reminder, we do have some injuries here. Yeah, so Kotlet. So in fact, let's go here and give him another med kit because he is injured, as you can see, from being whacked by those dudes near the end of the last episode. So we will uh, heal him on his first turn. It's better than just sort of sitting around at a base healing. So let's head down there. Let's hit play. Construction. Attack Pandoran Nest. The threat level is medium. The enemy is Pandoran. Corrupted area is the location. Do we know the light level? Oh, because it's inside, so it's the nest. Right. And we get all of these bonuses to reputation, which will actually push us over zero into positive territory with New Jericho. So we might be able to do something good afterward. Uh, so our objective is obviously locate and eliminate hatching sentinels to destroy the nest. We have to be aware of the Pandoran defense system. Sentinels will trigger if a soldier is in its sensor range or attacks them. Eggs will hatch if a soldier gets close. This defense system, this actually sounds new, but maybe it's just, maybe I just don't remember the, the way it was worded. And then enemy enforcements will just keep coming in from the generators. We've already been through everybody, so we don't need to do anything more there. And the only stuff we're gonna be able to get out of here is stuff we pick up ourselves, so let's go. Oh my gosh, I completely forgot that what we can do. now that we are in these places, we take corruption points. I completely forgot about that. Oh, that's, uh, that's not great, but there's not really anything we can do about it. So everybody's, everybody's corrupted now. Okay, let's take a quick look around. I love the inside of these things. So there's a, there's a generator right here. How big is this map? Oh, right. We can't really see. We can see the edges of the map because I don't think the generators... Oh, we can see a sentinel right now. I don't think the generators... Excuse me. I think the generators are only on the edges. So we can get an idea of how big the map is. But the very first thing we're going to do is go to Gutlek. That's Raphael. But, you know, the order of these things changes all the time. It's so weird. And we're immediately going to heal him. Okay, that's his move. Or that's two points of his move. Let's see where that sentinel was. There's that sentinel. So obviously there's going to be some eggs there because there always are. So we're going to creep up there. And see what we can see. We'll be a little cautious. You know, I wish I could get the stats for the weapons. Uh, just by hovering over them. So this thing has no shreds. So with this, if I understand this armor break ability, he can add 30 points of shred damage to a single Hephaestus shot, which would be just kind of incredible. We're going to start with Kirill, because we know the guy is right here, and Kirill is all stealthed up. So let's move Kirill... We want to make sure we leave enough action points for him to be able to shoot. But let's move him slowly and see what we can see. I'm sure we'll expose... As I was saying, we'll expose some guys. We've got another hatching sentinel and a poison worm. Okay. Okay, and then where... See, the blue thing there is their activation radius, I, I assume. Kirill's already in it. So are some of our other guys. So I'm not sure how we stop them from preparing. Maybe we have to move our guys first. So maybe the, maybe this guy will activate the moment we move our guys. That's not great. But Kirill is not going to activate this guy. So why don't we, since we know there's a dude here, why don't we move Kirill here? Still on Kirill? Yes, we're going to move Kirill here. Oh, another enemy. Wait. Oh, just another poison egg. Okay, that even makes more sense because Kirill can be off on his own and start doing this thing because we can actually use his, his uh, drone to remove the armor off these guys. But let's see, before we do anything further with Kirill, let's see what we can do with the rest of the squad. Changes the order of these things all the time. Is this Raphael? This is Raphael. Let's see if we can get a shot on this guy with Raphael. He can, he can see both those poison eggs and, okay, hold on. Let's see, this is Nina? No, that's Elsa. What can she do? Okay, if we move Elsa here and shoot with her, she can hit and she has like a big direct badass weapon. Like it does a ton of damage. Yeah, and it's single shot. So, uh, so, 
we want her and it's gonna have a junk range, right? 17 range. So I think what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take Raphael. We're gonna move him here. Oh, I hope this stone doesn't get in the way. Well, we're gonna find out, I guess. Oh no, I think that looks good. Oh, that looks extremely good. Okay. So if we had Elsa in front of Raphael, would he would she block him at all? Because doesn't her weapon have shred? It does. So it will take it will shred all the armor. Yeah, let's move her up here. It will shred all the armor on that thing's head. So so Raphael's damage will hit uh, much better. So let's see what she can see. Okay, that doesn't look great. Oh, but you know what? With this giant head. Okay, hold on. With this giant head. She should she should be able to hit, and this should shred it. Okay, we shred it. Let's just double check that we shredded that. I think I saw that we did. Minus 10 armor. Right, because I think the head only has 10 armor. Yes. Okay. Raphael can't do enough damage on his own, but he can do he can do almost all we need. So Raphael, let's go. Let's take Line that guy out. Because shot. I think I think if we take this guy out. As long as we don't get close to those poison eggs, poison worm eggs, then they'll never be activated. Let's see what they're... Wow. Okay, hold on. They only have seven perception. Yeah, okay. So, we need to take out... How much does this thing have left now? 24. And it's days. Not that that matters for these things. We've established that before. Nina can see the poison eggs. Oh, wait, but she can move up more. Is that going to trigger this guy, though? Oh, maybe. Hold on. Oh, that's pretty... Wait. Okay. No, not at all. Not at all. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's go down here so we can give this to Nina. Nina should be able to take this thing out. You're already there. You're already there? Well, then why did I move you? Can I have your action points back? Uh, sorry, that was weird. Sure okay. thing. Yeah, sure thing. Let's do it. Guaranteed kill right there. Okay, so that's one down. So the the other, <laughs> I think the last one only had two hatching sentinels. I can't believe, I can't imagine that we're, we were so lucky to have two right here and that would be the end of it. There must be somebody like in the rest of the map. But still, this is, I, this is actually a great location. So what we're going to do is we're going to move everybody else up and we're going to take on this hatching sentinel. But we don't want to do anything to activate it on this turn because I'm sure it's surrounded by eggs. So, who are you? You're Chigger and Kirill. Right, he got like used all of his points. Okay, we still have some movement on Kirill. How far can we move Chigger? We can move Chigger all the way up here. Where is, okay, where is its perception? Okay, so, okay, let's move him right here. It should show a yellow thing. Maybe the grenade thing doesn't work that same way. Double time. Okay, hopefully we don't trigger that guy. That would be terrible. We did not. We were not spotted. Let's move Kirill up. Why don't we put Kirill here? I'll be right there. And he'll have a nice. Uh oh. Did it spot us? Oh no. Oh wait 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 wait. We, oh, it's Triton. Triton wretch. Oh. Uh oh. Okay, hold on. Well, he's not going to be able to spot Kirill. Let's just move everybody up. We can move Kotlet closer. Here we go. And that's all we're gonna do for now. Nobody can overwatch. Oh, Raphael can overwatch. Where are you, Raphael? We're gonna go here. Let's have him overwatch in case somebody spawns right there. Yeah, right there. Okay, that's it. Let's go. Okay, come on, come on, come on. His eggs are not obviously not hatching. Okay. Oh, okay, the wretch. Oh, okay, the wretch walked off the map. Oh, and now we can see where the wretch is over there? Okay, I'm a little confused about where that wretch is. Let's take a look. He's over there. Is this where the eggs are? Oh, he's coming around this other side. Okay. Should we do him first? Well, I think, actually, we can put a pretty big hurtin' on, on this uh, hatching sentinel. So let's do Chigger. He can spread the love around. 
by using his grenade, and that'll hopefully knock off a lot of the armor. Oh, wait. Why doesn't it... Oh, right. This... I'm pretty sure this grenade thing is just not going to show a line, like, a, like the blue or the yellow lines. Let's move him here, and he can knock off a bunch of its armor. Okay. Let's do that. Right? Right? Okay. All right. We should be able to really house this thing. How does that take? What happened? Minus 20 armor. Okay, well, we've alerted it, obviously. It did some damage. How does that taste? That's a thing. That's an odd thing to say. Okay, that didn't work the way I wanted. Uh, because what I wanted was it to knock the armor off the head, but I guess it doesn't go up that high. So it knocked 10 armor off of each of the other things. But that basically makes them the same. Although I think if we kill the head, then it removes the hatch ability. But we've activated it, obviously. You know, what can you do on this guy? Uh, I don't remember. Oh, hold on. I have to see if her weapon shreds. I think it has like two points of shred. It has two points of shred. So she could do up to eight shred. I think we might be better off with Elsa, although this seems like a really juicy shot. I'm going to take this shot. This is, like, it's in the perfect position. It's almost filling the circle. We could probably hit with all four rounds. We did. We hit with all four rounds. She could fire again? Whoa, right. Because she hasn't moved. Can she be the hero of the day? <gasps> she can be. More than good enough. Okay, wait a minute. What happened there? Oh, you know what? I think they hit different body parts. Okay, I guess I just wasn't doing the arithmetic right. Because the armor isn't reduced, so there was no shred. So either she missed with some of her shots, or it all hit the head and I just didn't calculate right. That's okay, it's no big deal. Because we can give this kill to kind of anybody at this point. How about Elsa? Oh, that seems like super duper overkill. What if we give it to Kirill? Who else can take this shot? Can Kyotla get it? Can he... Oh wait, we need to switch to this. And will he do enough? How much health does it have left? 44. And it has no head armor, so he can kill it. Okay, let's move him here. He can actually do multiple shots. Okay. Ready to fire. We're going to do this and let it do its big pointy head. Pointy head. You're dead. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, oh my gosh. That's the whole mission. Oh, wow. That was a super quick one. Oh, that's super exciting. I'm super. We got three level ups. Look at all the experience Nina got. So the only one who is still level one is Kirill. Oh, well, we need to fix that problem. He's only 13 points away, but come on now. Anyway, we got 400 experience that was divided up. We got three level ups. Oh my gosh, Kjotlek is level three now. Amazing. All right, let's go back to the Geoscape. And we destroyed the nest. We got plus four with everybody and plus eight with the mayor of this place. And of course, the rest of humanity can breathe a sigh of relief. We recovered no items, but that's okay. I can't believe there are only two. That was cool. It's the med kit that's the bulk of, of these hexes. And that's okay. We absolutely needed to do that. So we replenish all. Wow, that was so fast. We're going to leave the episode here. This was a nice, short, sweet one. But uh, sometimes, you know, that's nice to have. So thank you so much for your viewership and your support. I love you very much. And please remember, as always, to have your pet spayed or neutered.